The Traveler spoke during the collapse. In one of the latest videos here, we discussed the terrifying reality of the witness through rage and suffering. Today, we hone back in on the collapse and our Traveler. The speaker, through devastation and destruction, was able to hear the Traveler and its thoughts. Today, we discuss what it said. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about the Traveler's voice. Dialogue we heard back during the Forsaken subclasses quest where the Traveler literally spoke to your Guardian. The Traveler is speaking to you. Eyes up, Guardian. Devotion inspires bravery. Bravery inspires sacrifice. Sacrifice leads to death. The Traveler's been alive for a year. Why has it waited so long to speak to us? The Traveler gave you a vision even before its rebirth. When Gaul blocked its light, the Traveler showed you a path forward. The road to recovery is long, but when we grow stronger, so too does the Traveler. The Traveler speaks in many ways, some of which we'll discuss throughout this video and focus in on the Constellations lore book. The best voices. Voices that truly matter never allow themselves to be heard. This lesson is worth learning again and again, forever. Your voice moves as a whisper, murmuring inside larger winds. Only the trusted few can absorb what is necessary. Wise and sly and perfect, your instructions drop, leaving nothing but the hard sweet lime of your enlightenment. The path is set, your voice is unleashed. That was from Ghost Fragment Moon, one of the dreams of Alpha Lupi cards. Voices that matter yet never allow themselves to be heard, and whispers that guide toward enlightenment, possibly symbolizing the guidance of the Traveler even when it seems dormant. These forces influence events and characters subtly, guiding them towards a path of understanding and resistance against the darkness, most of the time without direct intervention. The Traveler, as we know, was silent for so long, but something changed. It fights back when it needs to, but otherwise, it just sits there. Now, the Traveler does speak through many means. Paracausal displays of power, dreams, music. In the Constellations lore book, it's all about speakers and their relationships with the Traveler. Some heard dreams, some didn't until they built a mask to amplify the connection. Until it wakes and finds its voice, I am the one who speaks for the Traveler. I could tell you of the great battle centuries ago, how the Traveler was crippled. I could tell you of the power of the darkness, its ancient enemy. There are many tales. In most of the entries, you'll get thoughts from speakers, but in lines like this, in between the brackets or double lines, you'll also get thoughts from the Traveler. Throughout the book, at moments, they mesh with the thoughts of the speaker until they're silent. It speaks of the Traveler's arrival, collapse, and thoughts afterward. Now, I'm going to read one of the first cards called Severing, so you can see an example of the interconnected thoughts or dreams then we'll combine all the Traveler's thoughts from every card together to try and decipher what it's saying. You feel it before it happens. It has happened before. You feel it deep in your bones that this thing has chased you across galaxies like an unshakable dread. It strives to undo. It will undo you. It will undo all of us. First is suffocation and then pain. The pain isn't localized to any part of you, but to all of you and beyond you. You want to run, but you are pulled in all directions by opposite and equal forces that hold you perfectly still. It is inescapable this time. You are losing everything that you were. You are bleeding silver into the air like the air is water, and you watch your silver blood float away from your body. Empty, empty, empty. I am the speaker who witnesses the end of the world. Through it all, I am overwhelmed by torrents of sharp, static images, something so fast and constant that I can't see or hear. 
The traveler is babbling, telling me everything and nothing all at once, in fast, stereoscopic, waking nightmares. I am myself and not myself. And I am stuck in a web of black spider silk, frozen in the mind-numbing silence of space. Have no answers. The fall isn't quick. It happens over weeks and months. Cataclysmic disasters, natural and unnatural, flattening human settlements on every planet. That I have made, I have shaped my work, laid flat. Earthquakes, tidal waves, solar flares, cyclones, sinkholes, exploding lakes, wildfires, unknown untreatable plagues raise populations in hours. Water goes black with unknown poisons, forced down my throat. The ground opens up and swallows entire cities. And I am sick, sick, sick. This has happened before. I'd watch it in my dreams, the cities that fell. Alien cities, torn down by a wind so fierce that it flattened an entire world. And it is not my fault. But this is different. The traveler has not left us. Something new, half remember and wished forgotten, this false sister has arrived. I don't want to abandon you. Watch on crackling video feeds as people try to escape the outer planets. Exodus ships burn, like I burn, up with thousands upon thousands of souls aboard. We gather in frightened, huddled, trapped, stuck, doomed, groups in relief outposts hoping against hope. I try to aid the relief effort, but my thoughts, run, become more and more scattered. I can't, run, keep separate my own mind, run, and the, run, 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 travelers. Then suddenly, silence, and it's the silence that truly breaks me. So you saw the speaker's thoughts there of the collapse as the world ends, so to speak and the travelers merged in there as well. And towards the end, the speaker says they try to give relief but become more and more scattered. They can't keep their own minds separate from the thoughts of the traveler. So the Constellations lore book is nothing new. It came out in Season of the Dawn. But given the new Final Shape lore we've been talking about recently with the collapse and the rage and suffering caused by the Witness, I thought it'd be interesting to take a look back at this and see what was going on through the traveler's mind at the time. So now we'll take a look at the Traveler's lines throughout the whole book and try and analyze them. If I'm messing something up or missing something completely, let me know in the comments. I am drawn to a bright and attentive star. I speak to it through movement, through feeling. It understands implicitly. So believed to be the Traveler through these readings, the Traveler expresses a connection to someone, possibly the speaker or humanity, as it's drawn to this bright star and it communicates with it through nonverbal, intuitive means. The Traveler was drawn here to Seoul for a reason it would seem. It failed everywhere else, but now things could be different, and they did turn out differently as the game's gone on for 10 years, the Traveler is still around, we're fighting that final enemy. I glide through space as if through water, tugged in nine directions by nine impulses. After the Traveler communicates with this distant star, this distant mind, it begins traveling through space toward it. So it's reflecting on its journey through space influenced by various forces or motivations. This lore was made a while ago, but is this a reference to the Nine themselves? The Nine are these dark matter entities that are sort of anchored and connected to the planets here in Seoul. So did they have any effect on the Traveler as it made its way through space to our system? There is whispering from the deep dark, alluring and terrifying, a reminder of things left behind, bittersweet and abhorrent. Here we get the traveler's acknowledgement and presence of this darkness, evoking a sense of nostalgia and fear for what it has escaped or left behind. Again, written a long time ago, but very awesome when you consider the new lore. Menacing darkness, this precursor species that became the witness the gardener or traveler was involved with for a millennia. The traveler stayed on their planet for that long, possibly evoking the sense of nostalgia it talks about in the lore book, and also fear for what it has escaped and left behind. It didn't want to stay there because they were trying to enact that final shape, so it fled. 
Next from the severing card where the collapse happens, I am stuck in a web of black spider's silk, frozen in the mind-numbing silence of space. That I have made, I have shaped my work, laid flat, forced down my throat, and I am sick, 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 and it is not my fault. Half remember and wished forgotten this false sister has arrived. Don't want to abandon you, like I burn. Trapped, stuck, doomed, run, 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 run. These lines illustrate the traveler's feelings of entrapment, responsibility for the devastation occurring. A sense of violation or poisoning, sickness from witnessing destruction, and a reluctance or sorrow at the prospect of leaving humanity behind, something it doesn't want to do. It says it's sort of consumed in this web of black spider silk and has no answers. I don't know if this was the darkness sort of encasing it and trapping it here on Earth or something else going on, maybe the poisoning of humanity. But when the speaker talks about the disasters that go on to happen for months and weeks, the cataclysms like cyclones and things like that, the Traveler refers to those planets as ones that it has made and shaped through these terraforming efforts. Water goes black with unknown poisons forced down its throat. And as humanity falls, the emotions start to pour out. It feels sick. It doesn't want to abandon humanity. The next card in the book that has more text is called Singing. I have cried out unheard for so long that my voice is raw. So this conveys the traveler's sense of isolation and desperation. Having tried to communicate or call out for an extended period without response, leading to a sense of weariness or exhaustion. As we know from the book, some speakers heard these dreams, some didn't until they built a mask to amplify the connection. So during periods, it would seem the Traveler was trying to reach out when we thought it was dormant, just nobody was able to hear. From the card building, I have given so much of myself already, but I give more. I become a beacon. I call my children home. I wish for something to grow in my shadow. This one is a little more out there. The Traveler reflects on these sacrifices and efforts to guide and protect humanity, portraying itself as a beacon aiming to unite its children or followers. Are these children the guardians it will come to create after that collapse, or does it go way more in-depth with the pale heart, the ghosts, and things like that? And the last card to have some text is Suffering. I am silent again. I am gone. I leave behind a yawning void. I do not recognize my world. I want to flee. Empty, empty, empty. So those lines express the traveler's feelings of absence or maybe withdrawal, a disconnection from the world it once knew, connections it had. So through these thoughts, the traveler conveys a complex array of emotions and states of being. From a sense of connection and guidance to feelings of entrapment, responsibility, and ultimately a profound sense of loss and emptiness. These messages provide insight into the Traveler's experiences and its relationships with the world and entities that interact with it. The Traveler describes its profound connection to humanity for a specific reason, communicating non-verbally and highlighting a bond that transcends language. It sees itself gliding through the cosmos, influenced by multiple forces. As calamities unfold here on Earth, the Traveler feels trapped, as if caught in a web. The entrapment is coupled with a responsibility for the destruction that's unfolding, suggesting the Traveler feels a deep sense of guilt or burden for the cataclysms affecting the worlds it touches. It expresses a reluctance to abandon humanity, revealing a complex interplay of duty, care, and sorrow. Towards the end, the Traveler speaks of a raw sense of isolation and desperation, having attempted to communicate without being heard for so long that it feels weary and worn. Despite this, it continues to give itself, striving to be a beacon that calls its children home, so still having that desire to protect and unite. And ultimately at the end, the Traveler hints at this silent withdrawal and void left behind feeling unrecognizable despair at the world it once knew, and expressing a desire to flee from the current reality. 
So this is all interesting now when you look at the final shape lore. Here's the names of the cards from that whole constellation's book. You have dreaming, severing, waking, longing, singing, building, growing, searching, and suffering. So it is interesting that the Traveler speaks in these cryptic ways and that only certain people or beings can hear it. We remember that one time it spoke to Rog who was trying to take over a ghost. The ghost said, ah yes there is, I am meant to share it with someone worthy. Rog says, I have worth beyond worth. And the ghost speaks saying, disciple of the dark, adversary, this one is not for you. And then a bright flash of light and the ghost is destroyed. Ronk saying, nothing but scrap. They refuse to let their secrets be taken, only given. So what we assume is the Traveler spoke to Ronk there unless it was the witness taking over for some weird reason, but another example of the Traveler speaking and being in Ronk able to hear. We've learned that one of your guardians has reconnected to the light. You say you have no power over the Traveler yet, this help me understand speaker the light lives in all places in all things you can block it even try to trap it but the light will find its way and the traveler will protect itself if the Traveler truly has chosen humanity of its own free will, then there is no reason I should not reach inside, tear out the light for myself, and leave this system in ashes. Only those the Traveler chooses will be reborn in the light. Yes. This I know. This is why I have claimed your planet, and why you still live. The Traveler will choose me, Speaker. And you are going to tell me how. But Guardians, that's all we got for today's video. Again, this lore took place a long time ago in the Season of Dawn but it still does seem to have implications on the Traveler's overall goal with humanity and this final battle with the darkness leading into the final shape and pale heart. If you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.